Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a banned party deck, which features a lot of the party synergies from Zendikar Rising, and one of the party payoffs is Linvala, Shield of Seagate, a 3-mana 3-3 legendary angel wizard with flying, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, meaning we control a cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard at the same time, choose target the non-land permanent and opponent controls, and until our next turn it can't attack or block, and its activated abilities cannot be activated. And we can also sacrifice Linvala at any point regardless of having a full party, and then we choose Hexproof or Indestructible, and creatures we control gain that ability until end of turn, so a nice way to protect our team from a sweeper effect as well. Then another party payoff is a Nimble Trap Finder, a 2-mana two 2-1 two Human Rogue, and Trap Finder cannot be blocked if we had another Cleric, Rogue, Warrior or Wizard enter the battlefield under our control this turn, and at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, creatures we control gain, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card until end of turn, so it can potentially generate a ton of card advantage as well. Then we also have Archpriest of Iona, a 1-mana human cleric with power equal to the number of creatures in our party and 2 toughness, and at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, target creature gains plus 1 plus 1 and flying until end of turn. And then we also have the full set of Squad Commander, a 4-mana 3-3 three, three core warrior, and when the commander enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white core warrior creature token for each creature in our party, and at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain indestructible until end of turn, so we can attack without fear. So those are just some of the party payoffs in the deck. Let's take a look at the rest of the deck here. And first off, let me show you how many of each creature type we have. We actually have seven clerics, seven rogues, seven warriors, and seven wizards in the deck. So we've got a nice split of all the creature types, as well as having a full playset of Tajuru Paragon, a two mana, three, two elf. That's also a cleric, a rogue, a warrior, and wizard. So it's perfect for filling out our party and enable those full party synergies. And the Paragon also has Kicker for 3 mana, and if it enters a battlefield and it was kicked, we can reveal the top 6 cards of our library, and we can put a card that shares a creature type with it from among them into our hand, so it can potentially provide a nice bit of card advantage in the late game as well. Now the Paragon is the only green card in the deck, so if you don't feel like having a bunch of tapped dual lands, then you can just play a two-color blue-white deck and play the Pack Beast instead of the Paragon, although it is significantly weaker. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at one mana besides the full set of Archpriest, we also have four copies of Overwhelmed Apprentice, which is mostly here as a cheap wizard to fill out our party, and say one two that when it enters the battlefield mills the opponent for two, which we don't care about too much, but it also lets us scry two, so that's useful at helping us assemble the full party synergies. Then at 2 mana we've got 3 copies of Luminarch Aspirant as just a powerful cleric that at the beginning of combat on our turn puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control. Then we've got 4 copies of Trap Finder and Paragon. At 3 mana we've got Limvala, as well as 3 copies of Glasspool Mimic, a 0-0 Shapeshifter Rogue that we may have entered the battlefield as a copy of a creature we control, except it's a Shapeshifter Rogue in addition to its other types, so we can double up on a creature that's already in play, but we still get to keep the Rogue creature type, and we can also play Glasspool Mimic as a tap land called Glasspool Shore instead. And then at 4 mana, besides the full set of Squad Commander, we also have one copy of Legion Angel, which I haven't been able to fit into any decks yet. It's a 4-3 Angel Warrior with flying, and when Legion Angel enters the battlefield, we may reveal a card we own named Legion Angel from outside the game and put it into our hand. So in best of one, we simply put three copies of Legion Angel into our sideboard, and then whenever we cast Legion Angel, we can grab an additional copy, so a nice bit of card advantage as well. And then at 5 mana, we've got two copies of Tasri, Beacon of Unity, a 4-6 legendary human warrior that costs one less to cast for each creature in our party, so with a full party Tasri only costs us a single white mana, and then Tasri has a very strange activated ability, which is also the reason why we're playing all these off-color pathways that you might notice in the mana base, so we can potentially play them as red mana or black mana to make Tasri's ability cheaper, and then we can look at the top 6 cards of our library, reveal up to 2 cleric, rogue, warrior, wizard and or ally cards from among them and put them into our hand, so it can potentially provide a lot of card advantage as well. 
Then we've got some removal with two copies of Journey to Oblivion, which also costs one less to cast for each creature in our party. And then when it enters the battlefield, we can exile target a non-land permanent and opponent controls until Journey to Oblivion leaves the battlefield. And then we also have two copies of Spoils of Adventure, a six mana instant that costs one less to cast for each creature in our party. And then we gain three and draw three cards. And then going over the mana base, it might look a little strange at first glance, but that's just because we're playing all those off-color pathways for Tazri. But if you group them by color, we essentially have six planes in the deck. Two of them make black mana, two of them make red mana. We essentially have six islands in the deck. And again, two of them make red mana, two of them make black mana. But we actually need two basic islands and two basic planes to search up with our Fabled Passage. And then we have one basic forest to search up, as well as four of the green-white pathway. And this is actually a dual land that's useful in the deck. And then we also have the full play set of base camp, which unfortunately does come into play tapped. And then it taps for colorless or for one mana of any color that we can only spend on creatures with a party type or their activated abilities. So it does still make colored mana for Tazri as well. And then three copies of Fabled Passage. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, facing Anumori, the collector deck, presumably all creatures. Uh, yeah, my hand's good. We've got three creature types. If we're facing an Omori deck, they might not have a ton of uh, removal. Probably just a mutate deck. And there's Paragon, so yeah, our party is looking good. Probably get a base camp and play first. Next turn I can go Apprentice plus another base camp. That seems fine. And then look for more party payoff cards. Trap Finder and Commander are both pretty good here. I might end up with too many rogues. In case they do have removal here. But if they don't kill anything. We would still have a full party. So I think I keep both on top. Octopus mutated onto the goose. Alright, so what's the best course of action? So I won't be able to have a full party next turn yet, since we are missing a cheap warrior or cleric. Could also just play Paragon and play Glasspool Mimic as a tap land, which could be useful at helping me play a 5-drop or spend 5 mana on turn 5. And then we'll just hit for 1. And then I can next turn play Commander, and then turn 5, play Mimic, copying Commander, play Trap Finder. Alright, so they've got another glass pool mimic copying the octopus. Just gonna get my commander in play. And then don't really want to trade off my paragon for octopus. And then next turn we'll have a full party and we'll get to draw some cards. Mesh. So we'll get to draw at least four cards here. Which is gonna ensure that we'll keep our full party going. One falls down to two. I 
And I don't think I can die next turn. Even if they mutate a Sterix onto an Octopus. They could have a Shore Shark to maybe bounce one of my creatures. But yeah, we should be able to maintain a full party and don't really see how an Omori mutate deck recovers from this. So if we can face a matchup that doesn't actually kill any of our creatures, we can usually go over the top by assembling our party synergies. Of course, if we face a deck with a lot of spot removal, it becomes much trickier. Iluna mutated onto the octopus. And what does it hit? Sterix, just a 6-6 six, six on the ground. Maybe they can mutate something else cheap. Great Horn, but now Iluna is tapped. And yeah, I don't think Gilded Goose is going to save them. So yeah, my opponent had a nice start with several copies of Sea Dasher Octopus providing card advantage. So my opponent definitely had the better start, but once we assembled a full party, there was no coming back. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And we've got a keepable hand. We've got Cleric Rogue Warrior, just missing one creature type and then... Most of our cards are still okay by themselves. Base cam to give us perfect mana. Can also start thinking about playing pathways as red or black mana for Tazri, although with double base cam that's probably not super necessary. Alright, so I guess we'll just play the forest for now. And then between Aspirant and Trap Finder, probably lead with Aspirant. And hopefully we can find a wizard soon. Opponent on a strange multicolor control deck, maybe? Elspeth's Nightmare, gonna kill our Aspirant, that's unfortunate. Did find a backup Cleric at least. So I guess we'll go Trap Finder plus Archpriest for this turn. So we're still missing a Wizard. Luckily, no non creature spells for the opponent to steal with the Nightmare. And then Tazri can provide a bit of card advantage if uh, we get to untap with her. Possible my opponent's playing some sort of enchantment synergy deck and they're playing the various Sanctums. And yeah, there is Sanctum of Tranquil Light. So the Sanctum we don't want to see is a red one. And we also don't really want to see Blood Chief's Thirst Killing, my rogue. All right, let's get Tazri in play and start drawing cards with it. So let's see here. I'm currently missing a red or black, so I do have the option to play Murkwater Pathway to have a four mana activated ability here. There's a red Sanctum, so that can potentially take out my creatures. Alright, so... Probably fine to play this as Murkwater Pathway, and then activate Tazri. And then I can potentially find another Archpriest I can play for one mana. And there's Archpriests. But we can also take Wizard and Rogue, which is probably better. Could also take a backup Tazri in case I answer the first one, maybe that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I think I'll take backup Tazri and then... Let's see, we've got Warrior, 
cleric. Which one's harder to find? Probably take the uh, apprentice over another archpriest. So now if something bad happens to Tasri, we still have a backup. And that can provide hopefully enough card advantage to fight through the Sanctum of Shattered Heights. Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest is going to provide a ton of mana. So yeah, if they have the five color Sanctum in hand, that could be an issue. For now, they're gonna shoot down the Archpriests. So... I want to get on the board, so probably get Apprentice and Squad Commander in play. And then we're looking for a Cleric. Journey is also great here. Definitely want to draw that. So now we've got an answer for one of the opponent's enchantments. Sanctum of Stone Fangs going to start draining me for four. And they have the Sanctum of Calm Waters as well for card advantage. Seems like I need to shut down the card draw here. Still gonna be in a bit of trouble if they top deck well, but at least for Shatter Times they need to draw another Sanctum or Land to discard, and for damage isn't enough to kill Tasri. And we can probably beat my opponent draining me for four each turn. So let's see here. I've got Seven mana, so I can still activate Tasri and Journey. So that seems fine. Only find Archpriests. So we're still missing a Rogue for a full party. Don't have lethal if I remove the wall, so... I'll just attack, deal 7, point falls to 7. And we'll see what they decide to do. Kills Archpriests, which does make sense since it's the only cleric who've got a ton of warriors in play. Alright, so we'll activate Tansri. Gets tapped down, so now we find pretty much all the creature types we need. So I can take a rogue and a cleric to have a full party. Or I can take Limvala to protect the team in case my opponent top decks a sweeper like Shatter the Sky. It's maybe safer. Yeah, I'll take a Limvala. And then just play Limvala this turn. And next turn I should be able to find Another Cleric by activating Tasri. Sanctum kills Limvala, sure. There's Paragon, so that's going to be the missing creature type. So I can play a two mana Paragon, play Mimic, and let's see, I guess I'm one mana short of also playing the author Squad Commander, but I can just copy the Squad Commander, so that's fine. 
So do I get to play this kicked? I guess I do. And then we'll grab another Paragon, probably. Copy Commander. Full party, two Commander triggers. Smash, so my opponent can chump and fall to three. Or I guess block three and fall to one. Let's see if they can top deck a Sweeper here. Don't have my Linvala in play anymore. And Paragon will ensure that we'll still have a full party for next turn, not that we need it. So yeah, early on we decided to grab a second Tasri, just in case. Did not end up uh, needing the second Tasri, but it was nice to have the backup, in case my opponent found removal. And uh, yeah, the card advantage from Tasri, from cards like Paragon, has been a very useful So that's how you kind of want to approach the control matchup. GG's. Got to get a full party going. All right, I could play another commander, but let's not waste too much time. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And this hand's not great. We have two clerics, one warrior. So I can cast the four mana spoils on turn five. I do get to fetch an island, so I'll have blue and white mana, still missing green. But I do get to curve out with Archpriest and Aspirant on turns one and two. So this one's close. It's definitely not a great hand, but it might still be keepable. All right, finding a green land is nice. So we'll just play Archpriest to turn one, turn two, play Pathway as a green source, play Aspirant. And what would be one of our better draws? A cheap wizard or rogue. Ooh, opponent on the green-white plus one plus one counter deck. So they might not have a ton of removal, which is good for us. but they can definitely go big if they find a Conclave Mentor or an Aspirant. All right. So I might have to journey at some point to get rid of the Wildwood Scourge or Aspirant. Take three. All right, Paragon was an excellent draw as well. And then I might as well fetch an island right now. The Ozolith, all right. And a second Aspirant. a lot of damage coming our way. So if we play squad commander we don't have a full party yet. 
I could spoils to help me find a party for next turn. Or I could journey, getting rid of one of the opponent's creatures, but it's unclear which one. If we remove the Scourge, they do get five counters on the Ozolith, which is still pretty bad for me. I guess Commander just making a couple chump blockers is appealing, since it can chump the Scourge. So that's probably the play. And then we'll put a counter on Paragon so that can attack. Opponent also falls to 5. And next turn we can maybe gain Flying with Archpriest. So that can get across the finish line. Uh oh, Gem Racer mutated onto the Wildwood Scourge, means trample. And that now means that my plan of jumping with 1 1 tokens is not gonna work out. And I don't have that much toughness, so I'm just dead here. Yeah, a bit of an unexpected Gem Racer here, doing a pretty good job. But it does combo nicely with all the plus one counter creatures. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. We've got good mana, turn one apprentice to scry towards a three drop. And then trap finder, hopefully turn for a commander with the full party. So we currently have a rogue, wizard and warrior, so we're missing a cleric. And there's a cleric, and then I guess I'll take land for as well. Opponent playing some sort of blue-green enchantment deck. So let's play a rogue. Mystic Subduel says minus two minus so loses all abilities, but it does still count as a human rogue at least. So we'll still be able to count it as a rogue for other party synergies. Eutropia shows up. All right, so this turn could also play Mimic, copy the Trap Finder. That's an interesting uh, play as well. Or I can just play Archpriest to set up my squad commander for next turn and have a full party right away. Yeah, that might be better. And I will hang on to Mimic to play it as a creature, I think. Warbriar Blessing, unfortunately, is gonna fight Archpriest here. So no full party anymore. So probably just wanna draw some cards with spoils, or I can play Squad Commander anyway. And then I still need to find a Cleric, but next turn I can maybe Spoils and play Cleric afterwards. So probably play this as a White Land. And hope they don't have more Warbriar Blessings. It does some training. All right, so it's a pretty big and scary Eutropia. Another wizard. Yeah, I think we just draw, and then which lands to keep untapped. Could also keep my green mana untapped in case we find the elf. So probably leave green-white untapped, which are the colors that will give me a cleric. 
And then I'll play this as a blue source since we might want double blue at some point. Alright, there's a Paragon. So full party achieved. And we've got a Trap Finder number two to provide a ton of card advantage here. Eutropia gets in for seven. But if they don't have removal, they appear pretty dead. So play Trap Finder. Play Mimic copying Commander. And we're gonna have quite a party here. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Let's have a look at our hand here. We've got Rogue, all creature types, two warriors. Yes, this is fine. Don't have double white yet for Legion Angel, but we should be able to find it. And then hoping to pick up some cheap clerics and wizards. Not sure yet if I'm playing Trap Finder or Paragon on turn two. Kind of depends how controlling the opponent's deck is. If we expect a lot of removal, probably want to wait to play Paragon Kicked. Opponent on blue-black picked up a second Trap Finder, so I'll probably play one of them now. Did find a second white source in the meantime. So we'll be able to finally play Legion Angel. Thirst kills Trap Finder. I'll just play another one, I think, or I can play a Paragon now. But I really want to play it kicked if they're gonna try and one for one me a bunch. And it's probably gonna be difficult to assemble a full party to begin with. Frantic inventory, and our opponent's missing land drops, so that's not good for them. So we'll hit for two, play Legion Angel while the opponent can't counter it. And we've got a steady stream of four threes. Don't have double green in my lands currently, so I wouldn't be able to play both Paragons and get a full party for Trap Finder. But we're getting close. There's Ruin Crab, opponent's still missing land drops. And there's a wizard, so all of a sudden we do have a full party. Milt two of the opponent's lands. Feels kind of mean, but... Uh, let's see, do I want Tosri, Trap Finder? Both of these creatures are fine, but I think I'd rather just find more lands so I can start playing Paragon with Kicker. Trap Finder is unblockable, so we get to draw two cards. And Fable Passage means I can still play an extra creature here. I'll get a Forest and play Paragon. Yeah, my opponent missing land drops here was a bit unfortunate. But they did keep a two lander, I guess. Teferi's Tutelage. I might be able to close out the game with Squad Commander and Archpriest. Alright, so we'll give uh, Paragon Flying. Smash. So even if my opponent jumps, they're still taking 15. Alright, sweet. I'm glad I got to see Legion Angel in action, and yeah. Getting to a full party thanks to the Tajuro Paragon isn't too difficult. 
on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with, let's see, can make white mana, blue mana, we've got cleric, rogue, wizard, warrior. So if we draw lands, this hand's perfect. And even just one land gets me pretty far. And then we gotta hope my opponent doesn't have too much spot removal. Blue red pathway. Glass pool mimic, interesting draw. Probably still play the trap finder first. And then I can play a tapped mimic if I don't draw another land. Opponent might be holding an opts. And there it is. So a blue red deck is probably going to have a decent amount of burn spells. So it's going to make it a bit more difficult to assemble a party. It's going to be an ominous seize for now. Fable Passage. Well, we did draw lands, sadly, they're all tap lands here. So for now, probably play Glass Pool Mimic Tapped so I can play a 4 drop. And then next turn I can decide which creature to play first. If we expect a Storm's Wrath, I might want to play Limvala. If we expect a counter spell, I don't want to get Tossery countered. Tossery does survive most burn spells. This could be an Ominous Seas plus Volokut Awakening deck. They don't have double blue, so I don't necessarily expect a counter spell, so this might be a good window for Tossery actually. Now that it's not too expensive to play. Probably should have played land first to play around Jory Disruption. You never know. Alright, that resolves. Get to it for five. Probably grabbing a forest. And yep, there's a Volokut Awakening. Opponent gets rid of their entire hands. So next turn we can already see a Kraken. Another Ominous Seas. Yeah, getting a Forest makes it easier to activate Tossery, so I think that makes sense. So I can almost activate Tosri for just 4 mana here. If I play Linvala, I'll have a full party, which means Archpriest can give something flying. And I get to draw with a Trap Finder too, so that's quite tempting here. So we'll play Linvala. Move to combats. Wait, I can actually target the Ominous Seas, and I'll give Tosri flying. And if my opponent doesn't make a Kraken now, they wouldn't be able to anymore. So that's a funny interaction. Opponent does make the Kraken. And then I can still hit for 7 here, unblocked. And draw 2. So I'm surprised my opponent didn't find any cheap burn spells to disrupt my party. But now Limvala can also protect from a potential sweeper. Opponent falls to two. Get to draw two cards. And we'll just play a base camp and uh, pass, I think. Probably should have uh, tapped my mana differently since we don't have any green one drops. Although then again, 
I could have drawn the Tajuru Paragon and wanted to play it. Another Valakut Awakening to make more Krakens. But they need to find interaction. Limvala still prevents Ominous Seas from being activated. But there will be a window in our turn where they can potentially still use it. But now we're just going to target the Kraken so it can block. Blitz is going to kill Limvala, but it's too late and my opponent explodes. So yeah, my opponent had a fine draw, but they just couldn't find removal sooner to break up our party synergies. And once the party synergies start going, they're pretty hard to stop. So yeah, I'm quite happy with how the deck performed today. Got to see lots of full parties, got to cast my first Legion Angel. Now, don't expect the deck to perform at the highest level, because the deck will struggle against decks with a lot of disruption, like for instance the blue-black rogue deck that has a ton of spot removal and counter spells is going to be very good at breaking up our party synergies, and then can also back it up with a fast clock to kill us, so that's a deck we'll struggle with. Now, the more controlling decks that don't have a fast clock, we can potentially try to outgrind with cards like Talsri, like we did against a Shrine deck, and cards like a Kicked Paragon, maybe a Legion Angel grabbing additional copies, so we do still have a game plan against dedicated control decks, but disruptive decks that can also kill us quickly are going to be the worst matchup. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.